All right, this week at Edison Motors, our mechanic looks at some shiny lights. I get a little bit perturbed over an issue from our supplier, and we all learn a lesson on tolerance. I got an app that on my phone. I can control Starlight Headliner. Chase fell in love with this so much that he wanted this in our royal truck that we were building. You did that yourself? I did this 100% myself. Everything from painting the headliner, pulling the headliner, poking over holes for the lights, countless hours of work. When we picked up our sleeper, did all the custom diamond stitching for our customer. They gave us a bunch of extra materials so we can match the cab. And this is what it ended up looking like. Built it all from scratch, cut it out of an MDF, four by eight sheet, and screwed all the buttons down, stitched all the leather, put the foam in, and then we ended up doing Starlight Headliner. So that's 400 fiber optic cables and lines, and it should look pretty good by the time it's all said and done. So we'll turn the lights off and we'll show you what it looks like. We can do several different modes with it. We can go a solid color, any color we wanted. We can do fade, we can do jump, we can even just flash if we wanted to. And we can even go to the sound of music too. So if you're in a little, little bit of a different environment, it'll uh, flash depending on noise level. I think this is gonna be a pretty good showpiece for the truck. Even though it's not necessarily gonna be a show truck, we can at least have some cool features. I think Joel is gonna love this. This is the axle for the mechanical truck. We unfortunately don't have a 3D model yet, but we're gonna get one in-house based on the 3D scan that we're gonna take of this. We need a 3D model to design the suspension brackets and the torque rods with the correct geometry. You might notice this terrible paint job. That was not Chase. This paint actually serves a purpose and it comes off. It's only to have a better quality scan it makes the surface opaque so that the light does not reflect and make shadows for the 3D scanner. So now we're back in the office. We have the 3D scan in the computer. This is what it looks like on the 3D scanning software. We can see we have about 1,566,451 triangles. We imported this model into Onshape. In Onshape, you can actually see the triangles, which they look beautiful. However, we cannot actually use these triangles. We need to make this into a solid body. And for that, we're going to use Onshape's custom features. A great thing about Onshape is it has open source code. What that allows us to do is create our own custom features. So a user, in this case, created a custom feature for this exact situation I'm in. And I'm going to use his custom feature to speed up my workflow. So my goal here is to go from a bunch of triangles to a solid body. The way I do that is in three main steps. Step number one is creating a plane with a three point on the mesh. I select three points on the mesh that gives me a plane. What I do next is I use the mesh intersection curve, which is my custom feature that I found. I select the plane I just created and the mesh. That gives me the outline of this surface. I can now go on to step number three. I can use the outline I just found, extrude it, and I end up with a bracket. What I did is I repeated this process over and over for the entire axle and I ended up with the final result. This is what I ended up with. Now that we have the solid body of the axle, I was able to add it into the assembly with our suspension frame rails and I could design the bracket that's going to hold it into the suspension. So this is the bracket I designed. I wanted to 3D print this to test it and Onshape has a configuration feature that allowed me to have a 3D printed version of it and just click between one and another. You can see the 3D printed version has a bunch of slots so I could print it in different parts. And then I can just click here and go back to the final part. And that's very convenient. So this is the part I showed you on Onshape. This is the 3D printed version so that I can test it on the axle to see if it fits. It actually fits. Now that I've confirmed it fits properly, I can send our manufacturer the Onshape file and now he can produce it. Want to take your workflow to the next level like we did? You can try Onshape Professional for free for your first six months, no strings attached. Just click the link in the description to get started.
so we are at the stage of manufacturing. We got the new AAD suspension hangers placed. We got the airbags on. We've slid the axle under it to get that into position. Now the next stage of manufacturing, if you come around here, we've got to weld on these torque rod hangers. The torque rods are what's going to hold that axle in place. So there's one torque rod that runs up here. That holds the, basically the pinion angle, the angle that this axle is going to sit at. And then we have the torque rod that goes between here to the frame rail. That's going to hold that axle in place so it's not shifting around. So this is what holds the axles in place. Now, in the future, I would love it for these axles to come um, with all of the torque rod mounts already glued on and attached. But when you order an axle, you normally just get a bare axle comes in like that and then you glue your own on because normally when you're buying aftermarket they don't know what truck it's on different tracks have different things i would love to get it in the future where this is already attached ready to go but we need to place a serious order quantity for that to happen so right now we'll get these glued on get the torque rods on then we'll get the hangers on these axles and we'll bolt the axle weld the axles onto the hangers mount that in place and then the axles will be done and on so it's going pretty good. The uh, hangers attached right to here. So there's basically a cradle that holds this axle that gets welded on. And then the hanger gets a bolt through it. If you want to look at it, you can see one right up here. This one here already has this hanger waiting to be glued on. So this is just a, basically a big steel one. Pin goes through here. This gets glued on there. As you can see, we have made very, very skookum axle mounts. That is not gonna break. So I really like the AD suspension. This is one of the toughest suspensions on the highway. One of the reasons I like it, number one, we can order it directly from the manufacturer, but number two, it's a very simple design. It's been around for decades and decades now. This one's nice, it's not a cast piece, it's just plate steel, welded up, welded together. This lower arm down here, it's just steel that gets welded up, glued up, it's really, really simple. For serviceability, on the rod that goes between the two arms. If you'll notice some other suspensions, it's a permanently cast feature. Like if we go over here to the MCON truck, have a look in this. It's very, very similar, but this is not a serviceable component. This is all rubberized. And basically, if you have any issues here, you can't service this style. And it's one big cast metal piece. This one, welded plate steel. It's got a big nut on the back. You tighten that nut on, packs it all in there. You need to service it. You need to pull anything apart. You can pull it apart. You can tell that this is a much more skookum. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but I've driven trucks with a new way AD suspension and it rides nice. It packs the weight well. It handles the abuse well. Everything on it is just a little bit beefier and it kind of goes in with our ethos of what we're thinking. One more thing about it, you'll notice the style we went with is the older school style where it's just one torque rod to the front, one torque rod to the side. The newer New Way AD suspension, it's got a wishbone design where one pin comes out here and then it goes into one pin comes out in two different things. It's, it's like a Y, wishbone. I've had those trucks that have had that before and it ends up blowing out those bushings. This classic style of one single torque rod there, one single torque rod there. In my mind, I've had better luck. I've had fewer bushings go. I know it's a little bit of personal experience and bias, but I like that. It's also easier to find because that's just a common torque rod. You can just go and order a torque rod. You just need to know the length and you order that torque rod length and you bolt that up. You don't need to go find a special custom made torque rod that's in a wishbone configuration. So with that aspect, rather than having one center point with two running out, just keep it simple, keep it easy to repair, easy to source parts. That's why we're welding on this style. Another little difference you see here, if you have a look under here, there's no plate on the back side of this. So these bolts are really what are holding your suspension system on which works, I've had log bunks attached to bolts, it'll hold, it's really not a concern unless you lose your bolts, but if they're torqued up, it should be fine. However, on the new AAD suspension, let's go to the front here so we can see it nice and easily. It has a cradle. So this suspension here is cradling and holding that frame rail up. So you have more bolts through the side here, and then you have this, and then underneath here, if you have a look under here, so it mounts to the side, it cradles it, 
and there's bolts that attach through this cross member. So this thing here bolts up through it. So it bolts through the frame rail, it cradles it, and it bolts it right through here. It just gives you a lot more reinforcement of your suspension to your frame. Nice mud clearing too. Like that's huge holes to get all the mud out, which also the Primax has. Yeah, improvements. So we had a bit of a f up on these axles here. I wanted to re-record this audio to avoid the obvious community guidelines violation that was about to occur as I explained the difficulties of manufacturing and dealing with suppliers. Now the problem involved the rearmost brake chambers on the axle. You see, due to the airbags being at the rear, the brake chambers need to be located at the front of the axle. This was something that we had expressed to the supplier multiple times that we have air ride and all brake chambers need to be forward. Unfortunately, while the front two axles had the brake chambers in the correct orientation, the rearmost brake chambers were at the rear of the axle, meaning that we were unable to mount them. I apologize, this is something that I personally should have checked a little bit sooner upon first getting the axles until we had them installed and went to go put the brake chambers on. We realized this problem a little bit too late. We reached out to the manufacturer. They can correct this and send us new axles but that can take two to three months. We do not have that kind of timeline, however, so I decided we would expedite the process, go to the local parts store, source a local Meridor axle, while a little bit more expensive, it will not delay production. We solved the issue and we're moving ahead. We got the very front axle of this tri-drive here. We're just about to drop this diff into the housing. Pretty standard setup here. Locking collar for the axle shafts, big ring gear. Up top, we got the power divider. Power flows through, comes out through this. There's supposed to be a shaft here. It's not installed yet. It's called the through shaft, and that connects to your drive shaft, which continues on to the rear diffs. And it's the same for the middle and the front. And then the rear is uh, obviously doesn't have a power divider like these ones. It's a uh, straight drive. This is your main pinion up under here. And then uh, when you engage your power divider, locks in a collar, which then turns your drop gear, which then rotates your uh, ring gear, puts torque to the wheels. We've dropped in the third member to the housing and got it all prepped up, cut the mounts off. We're going to fit it under the truck, see how everything fits. We got the new Meridor axles in. We got issue resolved with it by sourcing now another Meridor axle that they had in stock at the local place. And we got the axle hangers, but there was an issue with this now that's a bit of a hold up in that the tolerance. We obviously designed this, but when it was designed, for some reason, engineers love to make things fit exact. And I mean, like, it's the exact fit to the point where, like, we got to grind it down a little bit. Tolerances are so important when it comes to actually building things and, like, in the real world. What works good on a CAD model doesn't always work good in real world. Because you weld the plate up, the heat warps a little bit, changes it. You need to leave that little bit, so Jordy's been grinding them off here to make them fit. All right, well, so this doesn't happen again. I have written out a textbook definition of tolerance for our engineers to go over and maybe learn a thing or two. Um, should help us down here on the floor if they can imprint that in their brain. And if he screws up again, I'm breaking pasta the spaghetti in half before putting it in the pot. <laughs> yeah. That's how you punish an Italian guy. You just yeah. break the spaghetti before putting it in the pot, and then I'm gonna eat that pasta with ketchup. There you go, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have a coffee 
but with my lunch. Or have, I'm gonna order a cappuccino at three and then have pasta with ketchup on it to teach old Johnny a lesson. <laughs> That'll teach him. <laughs> so we found out that this one actually was not the engineers. This one was the mechanics this time. Score one for the engineers. And basically, he had went and asked the mechanics, hey, should I make these tolerances really, really tight or a little bit looser? And one of the mechanics had replied, make the tolerances as tight as possible. We can just grind these out. It was one of the mechanics that's not here to grind them out, of course. But the engineer did ask, and now we learned that, hey, in the future, we will just get these things made with a little bit increased tolerance. And I think we're gonna change up the slight way that this goes on. Because one of the problems with this is that when you put them together, because these, oh, there's a bunch of never sees on that, of course. <laughs> these pins go into each side and they go into the axle. So when we drop this on there, while the pin went into one side, the other side didn't line up. That's because when you weld things, the heat can slightly warp it. And if you have an exact tolerance, that heat will end up warping in there a little bit to where it won't fit on the other side. So what we're gonna do is we'll get these remade, probably a little bit thinner. This is probably overbuilt now that we put it on there. And what we'll do is we'll put it on each side, we'll drop the axle onto it, then we'll weld it on, just tack it onto the axle, get it tacked on, then we'll put the plate in, then we'll lay a bead of weld across it. So we're just gonna change it up. We're not gonna get them pre-built like this. We're just gonna weld them on when they get there. But hey, these are things we learned between the axles, making sure that we got the exact right parts, making sure we got hangers, tolerances. This is all part of prototyping. It can be very frustrating some weeks, other weeks it goes smoothly. This is where I'm looking forward to is that eventually we're gonna know exactly what parts, we're gonna know exactly how to build it. And when we get that new shop built, we're gonna be ordering a lot more parts so we can stock up that inventory. Well, it has been an interesting couple of weeks. Not every couple of weeks is successful. Sometimes you got these little hiccups and setbacks. I blame myself for this one a lot. I really, really should have checked those axles a little bit more. I should have been paying more attention. This is 100% my fault on this, but hey, these things happen. It's part of prototyping. We've got a solution, we're moving on. And now it is Christmas time. So we are sending the guys home, to spend some time with their families for the week and uh, we'll pick it up again in the New Year's. And if you want a little bit more Edison Motors, we also do have a podcast. It is on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Check it out. We'll see you next year.